Hey, first off, how many terms do we have? Three. Three. Do we see any like terms? Yes. 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 Typically, what we do when we deal with the combined like terms type of problem, we start on the left-hand side, and we look at this term, we say, are there any like terms with this one? Are there? Yeah. And, what we, and when we answer that question, we circle it with a sign, and then we circle any other like terms that we have along with it. So what's the like term with negative y squared? We're going to circle that number with the sign, or the term with the sign. Great. Can you combine those like terms like we did over here? Yes. Negative y squared and 3y squared. The co what's the coefficient of this one? One. 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 Negative one. Very good. Negative one. What's the coefficient of this one? Three. Combine them and what do you get? 2y squared. 2y squared. That's right. Addition rule says negative one, positive three. Combine them, you get positive two. Positive two, y, y, y to the fourth, what, what do we have? Y squared. y squared. It stays the same, it doesn't change. And then what's nice, since you circle them, once you combine them, just cross them off the list. That's way, that way you don't keep having that over and over again. Then we look for any of the like terms. So the next term we see up there is a plus seven. Are there any like terms with plus seven? No. No, in fact, it's the only term left. So what do we do with that? Bring it down. Cool. Can I combine these two? No. Can I get something like 9y squared? No. no. That won't even wouldn't make sense, right? We know that in order to combine these, we have to have the same variable part. If I don't have a variable part, how in the world can I combine them? That doesn't make any sense. That's like saying this. Um, I have 9 bananas and $2. How much do I have? $2 and 9 bananas. Yeah, do I have 11 bananas? Do I have $11? Do I have 11, do I have 11 banana dollars? <laughs> that doesn't really work though. You see, if you don't have those like units, and the, the terms kind of, I'm sorry, the variables kind of act like your units. If you don't have like the same units, you can't add them together. It doesn't make any sense. So here would be like having two of something plus seven of something completely different, just the number. You cannot combine those unless you have the same variable part. So that's the answer? That's it. That's as far as you can go. Yeah. Let's do two more together. I'll give you about four to do on your own just to practice this, and then we'll start going on to how to multiply this stuff, and we'll see some interesting things that happen. Okay, you know the you know the drill now. How many terms? Four. four. We're going to start with the four a. That means we're going to circle that, mm. and we're going to look for any like terms with four a. Are there any like terms with four a? Yeah. Negative thirteen a. Are we going to circle just thirteen a or the minus negative thirteen a? Negative. negative. Okay. Now the reason why I like to show you the circling is because of this. Uh, you don't have to reorder these things in order to combine like terms. Wherever they're at, just circle with the sign, and then you can do this in whichever order you really want to. So if you have 4a and negative 13a, you circle with the sign, just combine those the way they are, like that. Use the addition rule. How much are you going to get with the addition rule here? Negative 9a. Negative 9a. Do you always count negative 9a? Yeah. Different sign, subtraction on the bigger number. We're just going to put negative 9a and cross those things out. We keep doing this until we've combined all our like terms and then we're done. Do you see any more like terms? Cool, we're going to circle that number with the sign, circle the number with the sign. We'll combine that always with the addition rule when you're combining like terms. It's addition rule. We do different signs, subtract, sign bigger number. Negative six. Here's what you do with the negative six. Watch on the board. Remember, we're, we're kind of, I don't want to say we're tricking the problem, but we kind of are. We're treating these minuses, have you noticed this? We're treating these minuses like negatives. Mm -hmm. The reason why we can do that is because you could write it as a plus negative. That's legal, that's fine. We've been doing that the whole semester, well, whole chapter two. But because we can do that, we're going to consider this sign to be with that 13. So when you combine these, you can go, oh, here's negative eight, here's positive two, I'm getting a negative six. Well, we're going to write down, I know we say negative six in our head, we're going to write down, because it's negative, a minus six. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. We translate that back to a minus. So even though we're kind of pretending these are negatives for a while, we're kind of saving ourselves some work here. And when we put it back in our problem, this is not a negative, it's a minus six. If we get a negative, it translates back to a minus. And we will understand that if you're okay with that.
Okay. Are we okay getting from 4A and negative 13A to negative 9A? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Yes. Are we okay from getting negative 8, positive 2 to negative 6? Um, Remember that's addition rule. You'll subtract 8 minus 2 is 6. Sign of the bigger number gives it to you a negative. Put down minus 6 because that was a negative 6 out of that. Okay, one more together, and then you get a few to do on your own. That's a good one. You're going to get a lot of this type of problem, and also with some numbers at the back end, in your Math A and Math C classes. You get stuff just like that. So let's see if we can go ahead and combine these. First place we look, we're going to look at the 5x squared. We're going to see if we have any like terms of 5x squared. No. So you tell me, is this a like term of 5x squared? No. How about this one? Yes. 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 So we circle it with the sign. How about this one? No. no. So just these two are like terms for the x squared part of this. How much are you going to get if you have 5x squared and positive or plus x squared? 6x six, six six squared. squared. Good, that counts. So we get 6x squared. x squared, again, that does not change. We'll cross them out, signifying we've already added that. And then we have, let's see, we've got a negative 9x. I like it. Set it with a sign. What else do we have that's a like term? Negative 12x. Uh -huh. Combine them for me. How much do you get? Negative Why not positive? Oh, okay. So we're doing addition rule, right? When you combine like terms, you're addition rule. So a negative and negative, two signs, the same sign, we add them together, keep the common sign. You need to be getting the negative 21 here. If it's negative 21, minus 21x. That's what we got. We'll cross them out because we combine those two things. Now, quick question. Can you combine these two? Yeah. Can you keep no. going? No. 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 So if that happened, we really wouldn't have math. Ma mathematics would not make sense anymore. You'd never have, if you could just combine those, you'd never have more than one term. It wouldn't work. So we can't combine things that aren't like terms, otherwise mathematics blows up in our face. And your paper starts burning, it, spontaneous combustion, and I start crying. And you don't want that, right? I start kicking my dog so I get so mad at you guys. No, I'm just kidding. I don't even have a dog. But I wouldn't kick him if I did. Uh, but anyway, this is, this is the, uh, the idea, is that we can't combine those if they're not like terms. If they are like terms, great. Just use those coefficients. Use the addition rule. Combine your like terms that way. Are you ready to practice some on your own? Yes. Let's try that. There you go. So try that circling the like terms using the addition rule on that. See if that works for you. I'll be walking around. If you need help, you just let me know.
Okay, let's see what happens on these problems. So we're looking for like terms. Of course, we can count the number of terms. We can see coefficients. And now we should be really getting proficient at like terms. So on this problem, what I'm looking at is a 6z, and I'm looking for any other z's that I have. Do I have any other z's? Yes. Yeah. yeah. How many z's is that? Seven. So when I combine them, I have a 6z and I have a 1z. How many z's do I get? Seven z's. Good. So when I combine those like terms, Seven z. I'm going to cross those out so I don't have to worry about them anymore. Then I look for any other like terms. I have this number four, this plus four. I know any numbers are automatically like terms. So plus four and minus three, or positive four and negative three, using the addition rule. What are you going to get out of that? One. Positive one or negative one? Positive. So what are you going to write? Plus four. Yeah, you're not just going to write. Look, you're not just going to write a one, right? That doesn't make any sense at all. If you get a positive 1, we need to know that we are combining like terms, and that positive 1 stands for a plus 1. So we have 7z plus 1. Raise your hand if you got that one right. Good. Yeah, you guys understand the fundamentals. That's great. So continuing on, I see a 9x. Any other like terms with 9x, folks?